Here's something that might be interesting to try. Let's say you have a sphere of radius r. Can you determine a formula for its volume in terms of r? Well, this would basically be deriving the volume formula, which you guys have probably memorized from, I don't know, math 9. But anyways, I want you guys to try it with probably integrals would be the easiest thing to use. Because, let's say, well first, remember what integrals are. If you have a function, let's draw a little graph, and a function. Okay, let's say you have a function f of x, yes? So f of x basically describes the height of the curve at every point of x that you plug in. Say this is your x-axis and y-axis. That's not beautiful. Okay. So f of x describes the height of your curve at every point. So let's say you wanted to find the area under the curve from the y-axis over here up until, I don't know, this point, A. So to find the area, well, one visual way to think about it is if you know the height at the x-axis, you can just take that height, multiply it by a small change in x, and that would give you the approximate area for that change in x. And then you could do that again, and you'll get the next approximate area. And if you add them all up, you'll get the area of the entire thing from the y-axis up to a. Now we have something, actually if you make the rectangles thinner and thinner and put more of them in, you'll get a more accurate area, right? Because if they're not, if they're really thick, you're not going to be very accurate at all, right? Like, look at all the space we're missing over here. Okay, so a function that helps us find almost, well, it is exact area, is the integral, right? The integral is basically taking infinitely small rectangles and infinitely many of them. So taking the integral of f of x, starting from your y-axis, or x equals 0, and ending at a, with respect to x, would give you the area, right? So area from a from zero to x, or zero to a, right? All right. So how does this help us? Well, to find the volume, how could you find the volume of, let's say, a cylinder? Hmm. Let's draw out a cylinder. Sorry, my drawing is not very good. Okay. So to find the volume of a cylinder, or a disk, or whatever, you know that you need to find the base area and multiply it by whatever change in height you have. So this would be h, right? So the base area, which is pi r squared, multiplied by the height would give you the volume. Now, if you have a really thin disk, the principle is the same. The volume would be, well, the area, pi r squared, times a very small change in, well, however thick the disk is, right? Let's call it, I don't know, yeah, h. All right, now, if you think you know where this is going, I encourage you to stop and actually try this. But, yeah, if not, just keep to me. <laughs> okay. So how does this help us? Well, we know the radius of the sphere is r, right? Now, to find, just like we did on the curve, we can actually approximate. There are too many lines on this. Let's delete this and start again. OK. Just like on a curve, oops. on a curve, you can approximate the area by taking small sections of it, right? So just like we did before, if you take a small section of it and take a bunch of sections and add them together, you can get the area, right? Well, similarly for the sphere, if you take the volume, so let's say you pick, let's say you just cut the sphere here, what would you get? Actually, let's make it a straight line. If you just were to cut the sphere here, what would you get? Well, you would get a circle, right? Because if you s you cut a solid sphere, you get a circle. Circle. Right? Now, how does this help? Well, 
you get a circle and just like here we can make a rectangle and find the area. If you know the area of the circle and you multiply it by a small change in x, you can actually find the volume of this small disk, right? And if we do that a bunch of times and add them all together, you can actually get the volume of the sphere, right? So now the question is, how do you know the area of that circle? How do you know the area of the circle? Well, the equation for area is just pi r squared, which I made a video on how to derive if you're interested in that. Links in the description. Okay, so the area is pi r squared, but the r we're dealing with here is not the radius of the sphere, right? The radius of the sphere is this length radius. So what would the radius of this be? Well, something that could help us would be to put it in terms of another variable, like how far along we are from the center. So something that might be useful would be if we drew an axis. Let's make it an x-axis. Why not? It doesn't really matter what variable you use. Just personal preference. So x-axis here. So how could you describe the radius of each individual sphere in terms of r and x? Let's call this radius, sorry, radius of each individual circle. Let's call this radius h. Well, let's say that this is your x equals to 0. So you can actually see, if this is a right angle, you can use Pythagoras, right? So h squared is equal to r squared minus x squared. Right? Because this would be your x value, whatever your x value is. And now, the area at each x point is just pi h squared, right? Which would be, scroll down a little, area at x is pi h squared, and h squared is r squared minus x squared, right? And actually, we can write this area as a function of x. a of x equals pi at times r squared minus x squared. So now, let's do what we were going to do before. Remember how if you have a function, you can take its integral and find the area from some point to some other point? Well, here, since we actually have a function for the area, if we integrate it, we'll get a volume, right? Now we're not concerned with all real numbers of x in this case because like who cares what the area of a circle over here is, right? We don't even have a circle over there. So what are the bounds that we're concerned with? Well probably whatever this value is over here and whatever this value is, right? Now we can we know what that those values are because the radius of the sphere is r. So this value would be negative r, and this value would be positive r, right? So if we integrate our function, let's go back down, integrate a as a function of x with respect to x from negative r to r, this should be our volume, right? Let's say v equals. Okay, so then what? Well, the integral power rule for any function, so the integral of x to the power of n with respect to x would be x to the power of n plus 1 all over n plus 1. So let's go back down and see what we get. Remember, a to the power of, uh, uh, sorry, a of x was just equal to pi times r squared minus x squared. Right? Which is just equal to pi r squared minus pi x squared. Whoa, I made a mistake there, didn't I? This should be an x. Yes. Yes. Uh, pi r squared minus pi x squared. So, let's integrate that. Integra negative r to r of pi r squared minus pi x squared with respect to x. So what does that give us? Well here we have pi r squared which is the same as pi r squared 
times x to the power of 0, right? So the integral of that would be, let's open a bracket, pi r squared, x to the power of 0, if we add 1 to the exponent, that's just x to the power of 1, divide by the new exponent, which is 1, doesn't really change anything, minus pi x, 2 plus 1 is 3, divide by the new exponent, 3. So that would be our integral. But we want to know what the change in this integral function is, going from negative r to r. And how do we find a change? Well, if you have a function, your change from a to b, or, yeah, this change would just be, let's say, b and a. Your change, or, yeah, sure, delta y would be equal to f of b minus f of a, right? Minus f of a. So if you want to find the change in this integral from negative r to r, we have to take, uh, we have to plug in r into this function and then subtract whatever number we get when we plug in negative r. So we'll go from x equals to negative r to x equals r. So what will that give us? If we plug in r in this equation, we'll get pi r squared times r minus pi r cubed over 3. And then minus whatever we get when we plug in negative r. So that's pi r squared negative r minus pi times negative r cubed all over 3. So what does that give us? Let's simplify a little bit. Well this is pi r cubed minus one third of pi r cubed. Okay actually I'll just skip a step. Pi r cubed minus one third of pi r cubed, that's just two thirds of pi r cubed. Pi r cubed minus so what do we have here? Here we have negative, actually, yeah, okay. Here we have negative pi r cubed minus, well, this would be a plus, actually, because negative r cubed is just negative of this entire thing and r cubed, right? Like, you can take the negative out. So plus pi r cubed over 3. And this simplifies to negative one pi r cubed plus one third of pi r cubed is just negative two thirds of pi r cubed. So you're left with two thirds of pi r cubed pi r cubed minus negative two thirds of pi r cubed, which is just the same as adding them, right? So that means your volume of your sphere is 2 thirds plus 2 thirds is 4 thirds. 4 thirds of pi r cubed. And that is how you derive the volume equation. You can do this for a bunch of other shapes, so I encourage you guys to try it. It's fun. I like it. <laughs> Alright, hope you learned something.